Do you have any other comments, Fred, to make on the articles? No, there are four additional articles that the selectmen have not completed. Collective bargaining? Well, those are collective bargaining. There's four of those. Yes. Uh, just four general topics. Right. There's a collective bargaining. Uh, there's public works equipment. There's two of those. Okay. And there's the fire engine. It's one of those. Okay. So they're going to do those Monday night. Uh, I expect one article to be completely withdrawn, uh, which is over a million dollars. I expect another article to be substantially modified, uh, which is, well, the fire engine is about $700,000, $750,000. I expect that to be substantially modified. And um, there's a, uh, I expect to make a recommendation after discussing with Public Works uh, on the seawall to see if we can't get that cost down. Do you think we're running down? We can't account for private petition articles, but do you think you're getting close to the end you might be pulling one or two but you think with the four we're, gonna, we're probably going to pull another two articles uh and we'll, we'll be finished so four collective bargaining and maybe two more yeah. regular articles two maybe three because the 20th is our next right. meeting date because mm -hmm. we lost those three dates at the beginning of the season uh, so i think what we're going to have to do ladies and gentlemen is schedule uh, the leftover money articles, collective bargaining, and whatever you come up with next week. Right. And then the final review of all of the money articles that night on the 20th. Because on Thursday we have the school. On Thursday we've got SAU 90 from soup to nuts. And then the next date we've got is January 3rd. Final review on the budget. When's the last day for petition articles? 10th. January 10th. Yeah. And our hearing, well, that no. at 5 o'clock, everybody runs in to yeah, see exactly. what came in. <laughs> we'll find out that at 5 o'clock that night. Yeah. But uh, we will be able to pull everything together and get all the prints made for the 12th for the public hearing? We have to. We I know. It's not a question. It's we'll making me nervous. Yeah. Christy, I've got a couple of questions for Christy. David, go ahead. Basic, simple yes, sir. question. It starts with Article 10. We went through the 10 articles. I know some moved here. Are there now a new t 10 articles before then, or are we just start at number 11? First one is elections. The rest are yeah. zoning. 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 So those are you. Yeah. Those are out of our purview. Yeah. They're put up reserve. by the planning board, and uh, they're now subject to change at the legal session. Okay. And the zoning articles are posted online. If you go to the Town of Hampton page, right in the front, it will show you the proposed zoning articles. Um, Christy, you know I get hysterical over this. <laughs> uh, at the end of October, I'm seeing $51,769 encumbered from 2015. That drives me bananas. What are we doing? If they couldn't buy that stuff in 2015, are you going to surrender it to the unfunded? I mean, I, a whole year later drives me nuts. What? They belong to the department heads. None of them are my war. None of them are my Can we system. cry? There was one for the telephone system at the fire department that never, that contract didn't go through. So that one's still listed on there. Can we cry or whine or threaten or strike or note, something? So I will pass it along. Please, please, because that drives me absolutely nuts. Um, unfunded, because you you are talking about the um, unassigned fund balance, electronic storage. Uh, how about, Fred, do you think there's any money or any hope of buying the chief's fire hose and his ice rescue stuff out of that fund? You're not talking a huge amount of money. Can we please, please... You can't take it out of the unreserved fund balance. Why? Because it's against the law. Oh, all right. Well, that's a good answer. <laughs> the, f the funds can be used for two purposes. Okay. Okay. Number one, it can be used uh, in a warrant article at town meeting. And number okay. two, it can be used to offset the tax rate. However, the ICE equipment's already been bought. It arrived yesterday. And they're in the, the process. Whole thing? The whole thing. Good. And they're in the process of assembling it in the fire department and making it ready for use. Okay. All right. And how about the hose? The hose, you did take the hose. The hose some hose has been ordered, and, and I talked to the chief today, and I suggested that uh, 
he would he should look at that again and we should take a look and see what hose is needed <clears throat> particularly the hose there's there's the hose that goes on the engine the the, uh, the the lines that come off of the reel on the top of the engine yes we're looking to replace those yes uh, on all but one engine and that's the deadlined engine right okay. now uh, so we're, we're looking to do that we're also looking to replace some of the two and a half inch hose which is somewhat old but it is a currently tested and that it's viable for use because the 35 year old hose gives me the willies I'm sorry but well, Fred I, were they able to um, purchase that jaws of life for the engine four that's a good question that I believe that's on the engine they already got it I believe so because yeah, I said there was a shortage good uh, I think that's on the engine last time I heard okay, yeah. good. thank you well if we can do some of these odds and ends especially for the fire department that helps we're conscious of the hose and, and I've asked for prices on the hose today's prices mm -hmm. so that we can take a look at what could possibly be done out of the departmental budget to try to bring in some new hose in the, in the system. okay anybody else have any further questions Jenny well couldn't you use if you had unfunded balance if you had money left over from this year couldn't you buy the fire hose out of that only if there's a warrant article yeah, un, un, the un, unreserved, oh, it used right. to be called the unreserved unfunded right. yeah. balance uh, at the end of the year can be used for two purposes only. It can be used, well, there are three purposes. One, to reduce the debt of the town, the budget runs over, okay? Yeah. Offset uh, taxes. Yeah, you can offset taxes with it at the time the tax rate is established. We did that with a million dollars this year. And you can appropriate funds at the town meeting through a warrant article. Okay. Now, we, some of us, I guess, are getting questions. I'm certain, certainly getting questions. What's the size of the unassigned fund balance right now, Christy? Do you have I didn't everything in my bag tonight, so I will not say that until I check. Oh, okay. I did say it when we were setting the tax rate. I just don't remember the okay, exact number. We took the million out, so we still have, and we're trying to maintain five to seven million. We're trying, the minimum we, we maintain by uh, Selectman's policy is at least the amount of money that is on paid, that represents unpaid taxes. Right. Um, and just so everybody understands how we get this formula done, um, the unreserved and designated fund balance is cash, so to speak. Right. Now, that cash is offset by the fact that part of that is actually taxes due. Right. And I, I go back to when I first arrived here and we had a fund balance of zero. I uh, and, and we had, uh, I think the auditors came in with $740,000 that year that was surplus mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the year after the audit. And there was an automatic motion on the board to take it all and apply it to the tax rate. And my answer was, I'll have the treasury here next week and we'll be, be prepared mm -hmm. to borrow it. Yeah. Because at that point in time, when you look at the total amount of taxes billed, we still had two and a half million dollars worth of uncollected yeah. taxes, and that's where that fund balance comes from. It comes from the total appropriations and the total revenues, mm -hmm. less the tax rate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you have $25 million worth of taxes that are billed, and you spent $25 million worth of appropriations, mm -hmm. and you've only collected $20 million, you're $5 million in the hole. That's kind of the way the situation goes. We, we don't collect 100% of our taxes every year because and the state the law allows was, people not to pay them for three years. The economy was bad at that time. It was too. very bad at that yeah. time. But we started building the fund, and I think at, at, at its highest point, the fund was something in the order of uh, $7.5 million. Mm -hmm. And when we used it to buy. Like that, do they then get that 12% interest on top of that? Does that roll? The interest comes it? back in, and but that goes to the general fund. Mm -hmm. In the year, it comes back in. Revenue. When we, when we do the revenues, which is something that's that's uh, not officially done until September when the state says we have to have a final revenue figure, uh, part of that is unpaid taxes and the interest in, in it that's accrued on the unpaid taxes. So uh, when that money comes in, it goes into the into the revenue side of the, of the appropriation schedule, mm -hmm. and it stays there until the end of the year. Whatever is, let's say we have... $5 million we estimate for revenues and we collect $7 million, $2 million will automatically go to the surplus. So we're always trying to collect more revenues than we project, particularly from the state and federal governments. <laughs> and then uh, that, that gives us leverage when we're bonding. 
because it, of banks. It does. It also means that we don't have to borrow in anticipation of taxes, right. which is a big deal. Right. Uh, when I first arrived here, we were spending hundreds of thousands of dollars in interest per year borrowing in anticipation of taxes. Right. We don't do that anymore, simply because we have the cash reserve. Well, actually, in the 80s, the treasurer was borrowing... He was borrowing up to $100,000, which was a lot of money in those days. Yeah. And then he'd pay it off on December 1st, and uh, January 1st, and turn around and borrow that amount again. Right. And that's when we did the real push to go to twice a year right. tax yep. billing. And a lot of people did that just to eliminate that situation. There were a lot of towns in New Hampshire the day after town meeting that went out and borrowed their town, their school, and the county taxes in total. Mm -hmm. And then, they, but you have to repay those by December thirty first of that year yeah. because the state yeah. law doesn't allow you to roll it over. Yeah, so there've been some in a bad some, situation doing that. <laughs> but there's been some forward progress on some of this stuff, like that. It's so that it's taken time, but we're getting there. Yeah, and, and we we have a solvent situation where we have more reserves than we have obligations. Yeah, which is helping a lot. Okay. Christy, um, the end of November figures. Oh, oh. Madam Chair, I just had one I'm question. Sorry. I have one question for the town manager. Okay, make sure we can hear you. I will make sure. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, we've discussed this before. Many towns have gone to quarterly tax billing. Mm -hmm. And as these tax rates and the bills get progressively larger, I think there's an advantage for both the town and the taxpayer to get these in smaller incremental billing cycles than getting them just twice a year. I know you said this. there are administrative costs to doing this. There are. But many communities seem to find the net benefit greater than the cost. The communities that generally do that are either cities, uh, which have much larger tax obligations than a town like Hampton mm -hmm. does, or towns that have, uh, and I'll give you an example, I, I managed the town of Pittsfield for six years. And when I left there, we did a reval. And the reason we did the reval was if we hadn't done that, the tax rate would have been over $100 per thousand. So there are towns that are in that situation, so they go to quarterly simply because they need to do it for the income and to keep the borrowing down. And that's a good point, and that is something that we have to analyze and determine whether or not it's in the town's best interest to go ahead and do that versus the cost and expense. Mm -hmm. And the, the real cons, the cost. Yes. Absolutely. Because yeah. I came from a town that did that 40 years ago. Yeah. And it's in Massachusetts, it's fairly Different common. state. Yeah. Different different statutes. Yeah, but there's no statute that says you can't build quarterly. Uh, you have to have in New Hampshire, There's a, you have to get permission to do that. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure it would be granted. I'm sure it would be, yeah. yeah. What time was that, boy? And on. And on. Well, fortunately, we're not aspiring to be a and we certainly are not aspiring to have you move there. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm too valuable a member of this community, right, Bob? Exactly. I think this is way above my pay grade. <laughs> okay. Christy, the, the end of November financials, you usually get them to the selectmen about the middle of the month. You anticipating that I next know this week? And you'll give us a buzz so we can pick up our copies. Because that will really help us to have the month yes. close at the end of November because she's going to be getting right down to the down to the final uh, chapters there so I will let you guys know when they're uh, ready for you to pick up 